Okay, now to another outrageous headline making news and shocking parents across America. A single mother, a single mother of five faces up to a year behind bars. Why? Well, for having her teenage daughter babysit her little brother during the pandemic. In May 2020, Melissa Henderson had to go to work, but her children's daycare was closed due to COVID. Her solution? She decided to leave her daughter, who she says is a responsible 14-year-old, in charge. Well, all was well until the teenager was reportedly distracted by schoolwork and her four-year-old brother wandered out of the house unnoticed. Now, he was found safe and sound at a friend's home within 15 minutes. But the cops were called and they cuffed the single mom and charged her with criminal reckless conduct. Take a look. We begin with something every parent has had to deal with at some point. A child care crisis comes up. So who do you get to watch the kids? One mom's decision seems like a sound one on the surface, but it could actually land her in jail. For Melissa Henderson in Blairsville, being a single mother of five children during a pandemic has been tough. She says first, she lost work and then childcare wasn't available anymore. But in May 2020, Henderson says she was able to go back to work for just a few hours a day. So she decided to leave her 14 year old daughter in charge of the other four young siblings. While that 14 year old was online learning herself during the school day, her four year old little brother left the house and walked over to visit a little neighborhood pal. 10 to 15 minutes later, his big sister realizes he's gone. A neighbor saw the child and called 911. The police came to her home two weeks later, handcuffed her, and charged her with criminal reckless conduct. If convicted, the Georgia mom could be jailed for one year and fined $1,000. Okay, well, Melissa Henderson joins us today in an exclusive interview along with her attorney, David Delugas. Now, he is the executive director and founder of Parents USA. Thank you both for being here. Thank you, um, Thank you Dr. Phil. You guys are invited here because I read about this story and I was shocked. So what happened? Well, basically quarantine hit and I was not working like everybody else. And my job opened back up, but mm -hmm. daycares and schools did not. And I live in a small town. There's not a lot of options to begin with. And I asked my oldest daughter, who's almost 17 now, but she was 14 at the time, if she would just help watch over the little ones so I could go to work. And she was completely fine with that. Okay, great, we'll do what we need to do. She knew that I needed to go back to work. And after that, it just spiraled. Okay, now in Georgia, it's legal to have a babysitter 13 and older is considered appropriate. A absolutely. Although those are guidelines and therefore not right. the law and the statute she's been charged with was declared unconstitutional in 1997, applied to a similar situation. Okay. That makes it even more absurd. You were arrested a couple of weeks later, but you came home the day of and there were cop cars in the driveway. Right. They were waiting on me to tell me that he had wandered outside. Oh, he went over to see a friend and she, he went over to follow his little friend to his house. His mom brought them inside and called the police. And my daughter went right over, grabbed him, brought him back home. And by the time the police got there, he was already home. But they just said, I just wanted to let you know that he had walked outside and everything's okay. And I said, thank you for telling me. Okay, we'll take care of it. And they said, have a nice day. And then two weeks later, they came back and arrested me. Okay, and they cuffed you. Mm -hmm. You look dangerous. <laughs> they cuffed you, put you in the back of the police car. They. To their credit, they didn't cuff you in front of your children. I begged them to bring me to the side of the house, not next to the kids. But okay. they were all there um, for about a 45 minutes or an hour while we were waiting on someone to come help me with the kids while I was being arrested. There had been some incident prior to this, mm -hmm. right? And what happened then? Similar situation uh, about a year before that. My little boy and my daughter were in the yard playing in the driveway and a neighbor called and said, uh, these kids are in the road, you need to, so they called me at work, it was my first day at work, and I uh, ran home, and he was, they were just in the driveway, but they just said the same thing, no big deal, we just want to make sure the kids stay inside. Why are the neighbors calling the police instead of you? 
That's a very good question. I felt that there were numerous avenues she could have taken instead of going that far. So they arrest you and take you down. You had to get somebody to come watch the children. Mm -hmm. Okay. How long were you gone then? Well, when he called me to tell me that he was arresting me, he told me just to tell the kids that I was going to run to this grocery store and that I'd be right back. And I didn't do that. <laughs> I uh, wasn't quite sure what that meant, what meant I'd be right back. So instead of just doing that, I called a friend to have them come over while we were taking care of this. And I was there for three, probably three or four hours. But you were treated like a criminal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mugshot, fingerprints, handcuffs, the whole thing. Right. Okay, so what charges were filed and where does this stand? I, I'm going to ask David to explain all of this because there's more to this than meets the eye. So coming up, I mean, kidnapped, run over, bitten by a venomous snake. Uh, we'll tell you why police said Melissa deserved to be arrested. That's next. <laughs> kidnappers, poisonous snakes, speeding cars. That's what police say could have happened to Melissa Henderson's four-year-old son when he wandered away from the home while under his 14-year-old sister's care. Now, the toddler was found unharmed, but single mother Melissa was arrested for leaving him home with his sister while she went to work. Now, according to the police, this wasn't the first time this happened. Um, so they said, well, is there a pattern here? David, what was she charged with? Well, Georgia has a reckless conduct statute, mm -hmm. and it's so vague and ambiguous, it really gives law enforcement the opportunity to arrest anybody at any time that the officer deems what happened to be unacceptable, which is why in 1997, the Georgia Supreme Court said, you can't do that. We can't give police this much arbitrary authority to do so in a very similar case. But then some prosecutor had to take the case up, right? Yes, and that's part of the issue nationally. When we all talk about criminal justice reform, this isn't just about parents. This is about the leverage of police officers, prosecutors. They charge, then offer a pretrial diversion or a plea deal that many parents take. And I commend Melissa for the courage to resist because the plea deal gets you out of it easily. But prosecutors count on those plea deals to not actually take them all the way to trial. And you were offered a plea deal that would require... 20-hour parenting course and no jail time, but you would essentially agree to a conviction. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel that I was guilty, so I don't feel that the plea is correct. And the DA said that your 14-year-old had a possible learning disability. I guess that suggests had less than a 14-year-old mental age. And I wish she could meet her. She's the smartest, most responsible kid you'll ever ever meet and has been since day one and what's her gpa at the moment i think it's 4.4 4.4 .4. I mean, 4 .4 gpa she's incredible and she did let the kid wander off because she was doing homeschooling on the remote learning right right he just walked outside he, he walked outside he didn't have any pants on right i mean he's four that's yeah. what they kind of like to do and you catch them it's like put these back on you talked to the da right you explained this child 14 year old has a 4.4 gpa this is not an impaired child incredibly dr phil i actually got a call from melissa who knew about parents usa before they arrested her i quickly researched found that case from 97 and i was like flabbergasted so i downloaded it emailed it to the district attorney to the magistrate judge who had signed the arrest warrant and called the um, police officer the sergeant was outside her door to arrest her and said take a breath don't arrest her today let's look at this they went ahead and arrested her anyway coming up why melissa's lawyer david says what's happening to melissa is well it's just unconstitutional we'll get into that a little bit when we come back how's the four-year-old doing by the way he's great he's six now i mean he's very smart as well, just as fun as he can be. Yeah. He's yeah. hanging in there okay. Yeah. That's the interesting thing about the passage of time. You don't have to speculate. You can measure. And all your children are alive and well. And Very much 
Yes, sir. And everything. So we have that history to measure as to whether or not you're an irresponsible mother. And tell us about this organization, Parent USA. Parents USA, Dr. Phil, is an organization very similar to the Institute for Justice. I have no authority to talk about them, but we're focused on the rights of parents, all parents in the USA, without our input or our view of the law, but only what the U.S. Supreme Court says the law is and the rights of parents are. So we just try to push back against the abuse of power, the infringement of rights that is, again, so prevalent and if they'll do this to her, imagine what's happening around our country to other parents, parents, uh, uh, minority parents, parents who are poor, parents who are unaware. So it's a real an epidemic, should I say, of power. Um, the incident prior bothers me a lot. It's as if this prosecutor in this sheriff's department is saying, if your child fell off their bike and skinned their knee, if you let them ride the bike again, you're reckless. So they're really trying to parlay a non-criminal act a year earlier to say this non-criminal act a year later is criminal. There are irresponsible parents in America. There okay. are parents that are abusive. There are parents that are drug addicts and negligent. There are all kinds of parents that should not be parents and children should be protected. And we all agree on that. But when we have a good parent, an attentive parent, a hardworking parent that's providing for their children, they shouldn't be swept into the same pile as those that uh, are abusive or negligent. It just seemed to me to be a glaring example of that, which is why I wanted to talk about it. Where does this case stand now? I filed a motion to quash and we're waiting on the trial court to rule on that motion to quash the accusation, which is the indictment for a misdemeanor. Haven't had a ruling yet. Uh, if he grants it, it'll be over for her. If he denies it, I'm going to the Georgia Supreme Court. During the time that she was out of work before the daycare had opened up, her income went to nothing. She has support from the father, so that helps. But it's really put her in a, a predicament that um, has impacted her. I, I could say more, but I won't, but I'll just say it's been it's really a tough circumstance that again, prosecutors and, and law enforcement don't recognize the negative impact on the children they claim they're trying to help. Yeah. And they didn't give you a citation. They jailed you and you had to be bailed out. Correct. And it was your ex-husband that bailed you yes. out. Yes. Yeah. God bless him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you two for coming here and shining a light on this, not just for your story, but for others. ParentsUSA.org. Uh, we'll have a link to that on our website so people can find, find you there. For more information about this episode, go to drphil.com. Don't forget to follow and subscribe to my podcast, Fill in the Blanks, or Robin's, which is uh, I've Got a Secret with Robin McGraw. She speaks with Abby Silverman. Digital Creative Director of Cosmopolitan Magazine. Robin and Abby talk about the secret to creative and artistic storytelling, life in the creative department at Cosmopolitan Magazine, and tips to develop your creative muscle. We will see you next time. Thanks for being here. Thanks,